Hey everyone, and welcome to the third season of Unpacked, a podcast by afar. I'm Aislinn, and as you can probably tell by this giant microphone in front of my face, I host the show. Every week on the podcast, we unpack a different tricky topic in travel, and this week is no exception. This is Unpacked. Well, Fran, welcome to Unpacked. It's so nice to have you here today. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. And you're not on a cruise ship right now, it looks like. I'm just off a cruise ship. I, Are you I really? I unpacked yesterday. <laughs> no, where were you? Where did you come from? I was on a new cruise line called Explora Journeys, cruising from Barbados to Miami. Wow. And how was that? <laughs> it's, it's, it's very nice. It, it's a really interesting new line that's sort of resort style. Um, the, a big ship for about 700 guests. So kind of an exclusive experience, but on a ship with a lot of space. Yeah. And did you stop at various islands along the way? I yeah. did. I wandered around St. Kitts and St. Lucia, Castries, and also uh, we went to Antigua. So we were in St. John's, where I did a fabulous little shore excursion, which was yoga on a beach oh, overlooking nice. a yacht harbor. It was just breathtaking. Wow. And I had never actually done yoga on the beach, so that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's cool. You know, we just recorded our Where to Go in 2024 episode, and St. Kitts is one of the destinations because of the rum manufacturing that's increased there. Yeah, well, and it's also just, it, it, it's a lovely um, area. You know, there's some beaches there where you just, you, you can be on a narrow strip and actually have beaches on both sides um, and, and with very little few people around. <laughs> so wow. that's what I like about <laughs> St. Kitts. How lovely. Well, I would love to hear more about your cruising background because I know that you are deeply experienced in this world. So can you, what drew you to cruising and how often do you sail? Well, I like to joke that what drew me to cruising is um, my family went across from New York to England um, when I was about two or three years old oh, on wow. the old SS United States. I don't really have any memories of that, but I suppose <laughs> it was it was you know something that may have pushed me in that direction. Um, but what drew me to cruising was I was working for a um, travel publication and they assigned me to go on a ship and. The first ship I went on was a Norwegian cruise line ship where I shared a cabin with my husband and two very young children and it was an inside cabin and the kids were on bunk beds. But somehow that the experience stuck with me in a positive sort of family oriented way. Yeah. Following that I was assigned to go on Seaborn, which was then an up and coming luxury brand. And it was such a heavenly week on board with champagne and caviar and the like that I did not want to get off. And the kids were not on that one. <laughs> a very different experience. Exactly. <laughs> wow. And so how did you kind of parlay that into what you do now, which is, it seems like cover cruising full time. <laughs> right. Which I've done pretty much since the 1990s. I mean, with some breaks for editing jobs and that kind of thing to pay the bills. But um, yeah, no, I just, you know, I was in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. I had only been on a few cruises when I met an editor who was looking to assign the book um, Idiot's Guide to Cruise Vacations, oh, wow. which I took on. And, and then Idiot's um, became Dummies, got sold to Dummies and Dummies. I did the Dummies Guide to Cruise Vacations and then a whole lot of cruise books for Fromers. And that kind of, um, you know, got me into that realm. And, you know, if I'm counting now, I think I've been on 170 ships. Wow. So it's, it's wow. you know, <laughs> there's a lot of background there. Um, some of them, honestly, I've just gone on to expect, inspect for a day or two. Like, yeah. you know, sometimes it's just a quick look. But um, no, I've had some really amazing experiences on the high seas. And mm -hmm. I will admit, and this may come as a, sh a shock to you, <laughs> I get seasick. No, really? Oh, yeah, so, <laughs> so it probably <laughs> wasn't the correct, um, uh, you know, profession for me to choose, but I load up on my Dramamine or Monine or yeah. wristbands or um, behind the ear patches or, or everything I can possibly get my hands on if it's rough seas and, yeah. uh, and I make it work. 
And it, I mean, you love it enough that it's worth that. It sounds like. I mean, it's the way I've seen the world. I've been um, to about 105 countries and my knowledge of the inland world is much less than my knowledge of the seaside world. Wow. Wow. That is fascinating to me. And do you still feel like when you set sail somewhere new or, or somewhere you've been, do you still feel kind of a rush? Like, Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I, and I put myself in situations where I, where I will have that rush with like adventure activities and that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. But even in a port like St. Kitts that I've been to, you know, numerous times, there's always, you know, I always look and I think all, all travel writers will tell you this, but I always look for that intimate human encounter. Um, you know, I tell people when you go on a sit on a park bench and see what happens or walk into a grocery store and see what happens, you know, talk to people. And those are the memories I think that, that really stick with us. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, how often do you sail these days? Um, it, it's been up to 12 times a year. I've cut it back a little bit um, in the past year because I've had a lot of um, writing to do. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I've, I've been known to get on a ship every month. Amazing. Amazing. Well, amazing or crazy? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you you are clearly, you wrote the book or books on cruising. You're clearly a pro, so I can see why. I would love to actually, a, bit, a little bit later, get your tips for people who do um, get seasick, because it sounds like you have some Absolutely. really good. <laughs> but um, which companies are you excited about right now? You know. Well, I, well, I am excited about the new Explorer Journeys. I'm always excited about Windstar Cruises, mm. um, which is a line that I often recommend to friends because they're really small ships. Their oh, largest yes. capacity is 342 guests, and also they're the official cruise line of the James Beard Foundation. <laughs> um, nice. I'm personally um, trying to do all the or many of the adventure lines right now while I still have the energy. <laughs> um, so my next cruise, which will be in January, um, is a new route, which I'm very ex excited about on the western coast of Africa, leaving from Dakar oh, wow. and going to the Cape Verde and Basagos Islands and Gambia. And so I, I, I'm really um, excited about that. It'll be a lot of um, probably pretty intense hiking and Zodiac tours and snorkeling. And Amazing. I just bought new water shoes with, you know, that cover my ankles. So baby, baby uh, stingrays and other things don't bother me. Yeah. <laughs> and who is that with? Is that with? Explorer? That's with Hurtigruten. Okay. which is a Norwegian line, which um, it's, a, it's a company that does um, regular service up and down the coast, um, delivering goods and carrying some passengers to, to all the coastal communities um, in, uh, on the west coast of Norway. Um, but they also have some expedition ships, and uh, they're rebranding now um, as Ajax. So I'm going on Ajax. <laughs> okay, okay. And what is Ex Explora Journeys known for? What's their... Explora Journeys is actually owned by MSC Group, which also owns the mainstream line MSC Cruises, which is well known, particularly in Europe and okay. making a lot of inroads in the US. Um, and the family um, owns MSC, which is the freighter ships as well. And um, they have started this line um, you know, to, to provide, again, that luxury experience, but not on a small ship. So there is a pickleball ball court and there is no. a small casino. Um, and there's there's like five restaurants, which, by the way, have some of the best food I've ever eaten on a cruise ship. Eating is a big really? part of the experience. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and they... Um, they, but but it's but what's cool about being on a big ship, but with again like you know they're going to try to limit it to about seven hundred passengers. There's there's so many pools and so much outdoor space that you really can pretend you're on a yacht. Yeah. And speaking of that, there's also a lot of new ships coming out that really are like super yachts. Like for instance, I last year I went on the first Ritz Carlton um, yacht. Wow. And, yeah. um, you know, again, like I think people traveling today um, is, are looking for <laughs> relaxation. And I don't think there's anything better than being at it, like, you know, an infinity pool by yourself sitting on a day bed looking at the <laughs> sea. <laughs> 
hard to complain about that one. Um, are there any ships that you're particularly looking forward to in 2024? Um, the, it, it's interesting because the new ships in, in, in 2024, the one that everybody will, will be reading about is Icon of the Seas, which is the world's largest ship, which wow. carries some 7,000 passengers plus crews. So you're, you're, you're in a small town on the, yeah. on the high seas. And, um, it's a ship that's operated with liquefied natural gas, which is the cleanest burning fossil fuel available to ships right now. Um, so it does have that that you know some some will argue that um there are other things that happen with lng although there's capture programs for methane now and they're they're really trying to um to get build these ships now that will eventually use the same facilities they have on board to carry sustainable fuels so we're seeing a precursor of the you know cruise yeah. lines going um, much more um, eco friendly, and uh, all the all the cruise lines that are members of the Cruise Lines International Association have committed to pursuing net zero by 2050. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so I but I kind of the seas. It's just I mean just with that many people and all kinds of new attractions. So that's one. Um, there's going to be a sister ship to Silver Nova which is another, which also operates on LNG and um, hybrid forms of energy, including um, batteries. And, um, you know, that ship has taken a much more resort-like focus in Silver Sea Cruises, which is a very fancy ultra-luxury line has done before. So I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, and Ritz Carlton will be bringing out a new slightly larger yacht. So, How many people um, can sail on their yacht? or at least the first um, one? Well, the, the first one is 298 passengers. Okay. I think the second one is approaching 450. Got it. Small. They're small. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you've you talked a little bit about this, you know, the environmental, you know, sustainability angle and pickleball courts, but how have you seen cruising change in recent years? Well, I think the big change, um, and I have a story about this, but is mm -hmm. the um, advent of uh, fast Wi-Fi. <laughs> Oh, wow. And yeah. you know that may, that may sound silly, but um, I, I got married on a cruise ship, and <laughs> when I when I got married, it it was a princess ship, and when I got married on the cruise ship, among my guests was um, a, a, a lawyer who's a litigator for a major corporate firm, and my cousin who was, who was you know at the time a big time consultant, and I saw the two of them go absolutely crazy because they had information they had to receive or send and to the point where my lawyer friend was ready to fly off the private island for a few hours to get to NASA, um, wow. you know, in the Bahamas, the cruise lines island to NASA just to, you know, to, to send a deposition or whatever it was she had to send. So um, as it turned out, uh, there is a secret, even if you're on a ship that doesn't have um, you know, lots of Wi-Fi capability, which is to get up in the middle of the night when everybody else is sleeping and nobody else is using the system. Uh, but anyway, there is Starlink on cruise ships now, and they're, you know, they're okay. all falling in line, um, signing up, and it's fast and, you know, wonderful wow. if, if you have to work on vacation, which a lot of us, you know, can't take more than a few days off yeah. um, without yeah. um, addressing, if nothing else, all our emails. So okay. that's a big one. Um, I also am really, you know, we'll talk about food again, but I'm really fascinated um, with how cruise lines have really come up with ways to suit all tastes. Like a lot of the cruise lines now um, have vegan menus um, and will do, you know, raw food if you request. And wow. they definitely have gluten free and fat free and everything else that you could possibly want they've really adapted and they've also added um, all kinds of specialty restaurants um, mm. on the all-inclusive lines you usually don't pay extra um, on the uh, mainstream lines you might pay extra but you can have you know you can go to a sushi restaurant or a pan-asian restaurant you can go to a french restaurant you can go to italian so again like taking that approach of the resorts yeah. and just having a wide array array of restaurants i think is is um you know, a big selling point. And then the other thing is the focus on outdoors. So um, on most of the new builds, not all of them, but deck space is really thought through. So you don't necessarily have to be with the crowds at a middle of the ship pool. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, are there, so 
bundling all of that together, and you know, you've mentioned a couple of trips that you're taking this year, but which itineraries are you particularly excited about in 2024? Anything new? Well, or? I'm I'm certainly excited about that western coast of Africa. You know, awesome. again, an untapped yeah. area. I'm excited, although I haven't figured out how to go on yet. There's going to be some river cruises in Colombia for the first time. Oh. Um, I'm, we're also seeing a lot of ships, um, the, the, the luxury and expedition lines, looking at the Kimberley region of Australia and on to like Raja Amput in, in Indonesia, um, some, some New Guinea, you know, so, so you know, more of that Pacific focus. Yeah, um, yeah. Especially with the expedition ships, they've, they've pretty much focused on the Arctic, even some ships going mm -hmm. to the actual North Pole, wherever it is at that moment, <laughs> and, um, and Antarctica. But now we're seeing expedition ships um, go to other areas, including sort of exploring the Mediterranean and places like that with more of an expedition angle. Um, and some of those ships have helicopters mm. and submarines. So if you're looking wow. for a new view of <laughs> destinations, <laughs> you have can you go a little crazy. I have done the helicopter in Greenland okay. um, with Quark Expeditions, um, yeah. uh, an expedition line. Um, and it was amazing. And in fact, um, they offered, I was on a, a Northwest Passage and Greenland trip, and they offered three separate opportunities to go up in the helicopters. The first one, you know, was on a beautiful, clear day. The second one I passed on, I don't know, I, the idea of going out in fog and then landing on the ship did not appeal to me, but everything was fine, you know. But <laughs> the, thir the third one was, was taking people to the top of the glacier um, to hike. And I've hiked glaciers in Alaska before, so I'd had that experience, and I had some things I needed to do back on the ship. So I just asked the pilot, would it be okay if I, if I do a round trip with him? And there was nobody else on this wonderful Airbus helicopter. And he said, do you want to see what this baby can do? Wow. <laughs> and, no. and, and I was suddenly in Top Gun. It was <laughs> really what did it was do? terrifying and fascinating. <laughs> oh, you know, sort of going up towards the mountain until the, the helicopter goes, warning, warning. <laughs> No, I mean, it was just really, you know, I, I felt like I was in very good hands the entire yes, time, yes, yes, but it was, it was just really fun. <laughs> wow. Talk about an expedition. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but not the submarine. You haven't done the submarine yet. I haven't done the submarine yet. And it's just, just circumstantial, I, you know, circumstances. I, I will do it eventually when given yeah. the opportunity. Wow. That is so cool. For people who are kind of drawn to the outdoors and expeditions, which, what would you recommend for them? Um, well, well, two places I'd probably start. Um, one is the Galapagos, okay. um, which is just, I love the Galapagos. Um, yeah. My most recent trip was on Silver Origin. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're on, well, in that case, you're on just a beautiful luxury ship, but you also are out all day in zodiacs, either, you know, looking for bird life and other creatures along the shoreline, or you're taking a zodiac on land to, for instance, yeah. walk on volcanic rock past, I don't know, 10,000 giant iguanas. <laughs> or, <laughs> oh my God. Or, or, you know, you're taking a zodiac and snorkeling and if you're like me, you, you, you're a shark whisperer, so you'll see one, two, five, maybe more <laughs> sharks oh come, come checking you out. Um, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're reef sharks, so yeah, even yeah, though they can gonna... be dangerous, they're not <laughs> particularly looking for you. But You mentioned Quark. Are that, is, that, is that a cruise line that you would recommend for people who want to have that activity? And... E yeah, that's one of them. Um, you know, yeah. there's 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 such thing as luxury expedition lines. Um, Scenic from Australia is one. There's um, Atlas Ocean Voyages from which is Portuguese owned is another. Um, there, I had the most magnificent Antarctica experience with Abercrombie and Kent, the okay, luxury yeah. tour operator. They um, they use Penault ships in Antarctica. And they bring in their own team. And I'm talking, we had some of the, you know, best bird experts in South America. I mean, just wow. an incredible um, group of more than two dozen expedition guides. Um, mm -hmm. 
What I like about Quark, by the way, in Greenland in particular, is they have a program where they bring on two Inuit chefs who do oh, cool. sort of a gourmet version of um, Inuit cuisine using um, foraged and hunted and fished for ingredients. And oh, that's it was incredible. kind of mind blowing. So Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, speaking of Penang, I sailed with them to Antarctica about five years ago. And it was and it was over the kind of New Year's time. And it was one of the highlights of my life for sure. Like the ships are beautiful, fantastic French food. And then, you know, rain in the new year out, you know, passing whales and icebergs. And yeah, it was exceptional. <laughs> yeah, and Antarctica is a trip. And, the, you know, that was cool is you can there's different itineraries um, that you can do. Like now something that's sort of caught on. Um, Silver Sea is doing, Lindblad is, is starting it, I think, next season, is you can fly part of the way to Antarctica and only cruise for a week. You know, it used oh, wow. to be these yeah. cruises were always two weeks or longer. Um, and and now there's a way to fly in, you know, see, see some of Antarctica yeah. and get back quickly. Um, and are you skipping the passage then? Is that what you are of... skipping the passage, okay. which, you know, in my case, my last case was, um, was, you know, Drake's Lake, but I have friends who've gone through the passage and been strapped into their beds, which wouldn't make wow. me happy. No, um, no, no, so, no. Uh, but anyway, the other thing with Antarctica is I've been advising people, my itinerary, which was 17 days also went to South Georgia um, and South Georgia has a lot more penguins <laughs> than wow. Antarctica, you know, the sub subarctic area. I mean, yeah. at one point I landed on a beach with a hundred thousand pairs of mating king penguins and they're yeah. all, they're the size of a small child. So if you can imagine yourself, you know, and then of course, among them are elephant seals, these <laughs> giant, you know, slow moving creatures and somehow they get along with the penguins and nobody <laughs> bothers each other. It's just, you know, it's one of those, you know, if you want to feel like you're in a nature documentary, I think that's yeah. a much do. And I feel that way again about Galapagos too, especially in the water. Wow. Wow. So you would recommend if you're going that far, try to tack that on or find an itinerary yeah. that has that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you mentioned it earlier, and I do feel like we can't talk about cruising without talking about the kind of sustainability aspect of it all. How, what, what are you seeing? How has that changed? Which cruise lines would you recommend? Well, I mean, I think, you know, in general, cruise lines are committed to reducing plastics. Um, so, you know, you know, single use plastics. So I think that's really an important um, thing to look at. Um, there are um, some ships coming out now with, with the hybrid um, fuel systems um, and propulsion systems. Um, so you, you, know, you can look at, look at a ship that at least runs part of the time on batteries. Um, uh, Panant has a, a, a ship like that and I um, think Herta Gruten does and some other lines too. Um, I think that um, as we move forward, you'll want to see what fuels specifically cruise ships are, are using. Um, there's all kinds of things on the table. Um, there is, like I say, liquefied natural gas, uh, methanol. We're, uh, Explorer Journeys is talking about hydrogen for their fifth and sixth ship. Um, and uh, what, what the cruise lines haven't done is gotten on the same page, but they're all yeah. working in this role. And, and, you know, and they're all, there are, have already been more than, I think, three dozen experiments using, um, you know, sustainable fuels um, from crops, wow. from manure, but, there's, but there are those kinds of experiments. So what I would do is if you're considering a cruise line, I would look at their um, online presence in terms of sustainability. Sub cruise lines are actually, um, you know, offsetting carbon, um, you know, by giving contributions and that kind. You know, there's there's that type yeah. of thing taking place. Explorer Journeys, which I was just on, um, has a huge conserv reef conservation project at their private island in the Bahamas that they're funding. And to give you an example um, of how well the cruise lines are starting to do, like that ship. Yeah that I was on Explorer 1, the godmother is Sylvia Earle, 
who's one of the oh, most wow. yeah. well-known uh, marine biologists and ocean conservationists. And I said to her, you know, like, really? You're looking at the cruise industry? And, you know, her attitude is they have money to spend and they're committed to sustainability. So why yeah. wouldn't I be? Yeah, so, yeah. And inspiring. I've heard that from other conservationists, too. So um, the bottom line, the cruise lines are putting their money where their mouth is and on sustainability. Um, and it's, it's really fascinating to watch, and there'll be a lot of things. Um, I should mention um, cruise lines are also great, greatly, during COVID, they, they all focused on greatly reducing how much fuel they need. So um, they updated HVAC systems and, you know, this type yeah. of thing. And um, their, most ships are making their own water, mm. um, almost all their own water in some cases. Wow. And um, so they're not going to um, impact communities that may be short on water. And they also, mm -hmm. cru the cruise industry has also developed plug-in capability. So literally there's a giant plug that can plug the cruise ship in at a port that has sustainable energy and wow. they can just turn off all their engines. Of course, wow. it doesn't work if the port itself isn't, you know, doesn't have sustainable yeah. en energy. And unfortunately, very few ports around the world have that right now. But the cruise lines, um, Sea Dream, it just announced that they were adding the plugs. You know, they're actually oh, cool. making the investment in adding this this technology so they can plug oh, that's in. that's great. So that may be something that we see over the next few years as more port cities adding that capability. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well... You know, you, we hear this sometimes. Uh, people say that I'm not a cruiser. You know, that's just not, not what I do. What would you say to someone who thinks that they aren't a cruiser? So I, I would say, first of all, that there are parts of the world that are best seen from a cruise ship. Um, and that would, to me, include, well, at least the, the southeast coast of Alaska um, and some other parts of Alaska. Um, obviously, the Galapagos because you know you don't want to just go to the Galapagos and be on land. That doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, and um, and Antarctica, <laughs> and yep. Yep. you know, yep. and there's others. Um, um, I could almost argue the Caribbean because that you're seeing so many different re uh, islands. Whereas yeah. you're not, you know, you're not just going to one island. And island hopping isn't particularly easy, which is why I put. The Greek islands also in that category, um, and um, you know. And by the way, Italy and France, the coastal Italy and France, another one that that's a lot yeah. easier, I think. Um, and there is a cruise ship for everyone. There are such things as sailing cruise ships. They might call them sailing yachts, but they're cruise ships. Yeah. Uh, there, are, there are cruise ships that have under fifty passengers. So wow. if you're like, oh, it can't be with a crowd. Um, you can be on a very small ship. Um, and, you know, it, it's like a hotel. There is one for everybody's taste. You might not like to go to a big name brand chain. You might yeah. seek out boutique hotels or Airbnbs. There are cruise equivalents. Yeah, yeah. You know, I would say I, I didn't have a strong opinion either way, but it just wasn't part of my life. You know, I'd never done it. And then what kind of changed my mind was a backroads river cruise through year. It was a cycling river cruise. And so every day we'd go off. And so we're getting kind of beyond these port towns and cycling into these incredible, you know, like fields. One day we crossed over from Austria to Slovakia and we actually cycled over the border. And it was, and, and then every day you come back, eat dinner, you're, everything's in the same place. You're not packing your gear with you. And I was just blown away by that experience it was quite funny. right i mean <laughs> basically the ship go, you know your hotel goes with you right yeah, yeah so yeah. so it's very carefree i mean to me i'm a real type a and i get on a <laughs> ship and i relax i mean they're feeding me somebody is making my bed sometimes even two times a day you know if i take yeah. a nap and i come back after dinner and my bed's made again and um you know there's a certain sort of pampering element you've got crew from more than 60 countries around the world on, you know, wow. yeah. you know just just amazing um, people to talk to and hear their experiences. Um, and, you know, you can travel at a very high, you know, champagne and caviar level or a very rustic level, too. I mean, personally, I tend to go 
my favorite are, play, are ships where I can just pack my normal clothes and not yeah. have to worry about you know extreme formality. On the other hand, um, some of my most wonderful cruise experiences have been on the Queen Mary II ocean liner, wow. um, which yeah. is definitely formal and has a ballroom where people wear ball gowns, and um, <laughs> you know it, it, it's a total different kind of experience. So. There's just such a broad spectrum. To say you don't want to be on a cruise ship is, is like saying I never want to go to a hotel. Yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. I love that. What would you recommend for people who don't want the formality? Well, I mean, the, like I said, the one I'm about to go on in West Africa, the Hurtigruten, I mean, I have a pile of consisting right now of T-shirts and some old safari clothes and a couple hats, and that's probably what I'm taking. You know, a couple of bathing suits, you know, some water yeah. shoes. On the ship I was just on, Explorer One, um, you're not required. There's no dress code. It's it's what you feel like wearing. Now, cool. granted, some people, you know, wore jackets at night. I mean, the only time it was recommended that that is semi-formal is this extraordinary experience they have where they bring um, a land-based chef on board. And right now they, you know, or at least that person designs the menus. And right now the yeah. menu is by um, the chef from Aquavit in New York. And I think it was 190 euros per person and worth every penny. Wow. I mean, wow. you know, it's that Scandinavian, Scandinavians rule on <laughs> yeah, yeah. extreme gourmet food yeah. these days. But it was really creative and, and wonderful. Um, so... You know, there there is again that spectrum, but I mean, in, in Alaska, there's uncruise is very relaxed. Lindblad expeditions tends to not put a lot of focus on what you're wearing. Um, you, it, it, it's easy to find um, these experiences if you want that barefoot windjammer experience. You could find that too. So if Got you it. you know if you want to be on a ship, a sailing ship, and help pull the ropes, you know that's out there. Wow, how cool. <laughs> I would like to do that someday. <laughs> it's fun. I've done it. It's like, yeah. you know, there, when jam, to me, wind jammers are like camp for adults, you know, <laughs> especially when you're sharing a head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> most, most of them you, you would have your own. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you really want the summer camp experience, you could look for that. <laughs> exactly. Um, you mentioned that food is a big component of this for you and that you like Windstar. So which, what do you like about that? And which other lines would you go for if you're a food person, food driven oh, there, person? There's, there's so many, and there's, there's wines that you would, there's, there's cruise lines that you would go f to for wine as well. Um, oh, oh, cool. You know, I, I like, I like variety. What I like on Windstar in particular is some of the cruises actually will have a chef chosen by the James Beer Foundation on board. Um, you know, doing cooking classes and all that. Um, and, you know, so that's a lovely experience. Um, they also have a tapas bar and, you know, also a restaurant that focuses really on, well, there's French cuisine, but they also always have dishes prepared with local ingredients. And, and what I particularly enjoy on that line and other lines are market tours with the sh ship's chef, which has become a new thing where they will go off and they will um, purchase ingredients. And I was on a seaborne ship in the Middle East, and the chef went off looking for fish and couldn't quite find what he was looking for at the mar market in terms of quality and the amount he would need to feed everyone on board. Yeah. <laughs> but, he, but he did have quite a discussion with somebody selling dates and walked away with a barrel of dates. Wow. And, you know, it was kind of like, will your pa will the passengers eat all those dates? <laughs> and he said, ah, oh, Fran, you forget that there's crew on board. <laughs> and uh -huh. What the passengers won't eat, the crew will eat in terms of those, you know, those wonderful dates. So That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, the market, the market tour, what a great way to see a new city or town or well exactly and when you're with a chef who, who you know speaks the language or has an interpreter and really I mean I was yeah. with a chef who picked tomatoes at a market in Nice you know it's just like the whole process of you know him tasting yeah. and fussing and making sure everything was particularly right I just really enjoy that yeah. um, but there's yeah, all, almost all the Luxury lines, Regent, Crystal, Seaborn, Silver Sea, Explora, you know, um, Ritz-Carlton. They, they, they put an emphasis on wonderful food. 
And, you know, on, on, on those lines in particular, you're going to find the truffles and the foie gras and the, and the caviar. Mm. Um, but in addition to that, in the mainstream lines, you know, they are also now focusing a bit on um, sustainable products. So uh, Holland America in particular is only serving fresh Alaska seafood in Alaska. Okay. And they've recently translated that program, so they're going to actually pick up fish on itineraries around the world. So you will you will be able to sample you know fresh fish from from where you're cruising. And the cruise lines are also pretty good about now um, getting on wine from the regions um, where you're cruising. So oh, cool. you can try Greek wines in Greece. You can try Australian wines in Australia. Um, so that's another yeah. thing they're really focusing on that, um, you know, f for the aspect of sustainability and also because, you know, people are cu more curious about food. We've all become foodies and we want yes. that experience. Yes. And why not? You're there. Why not align in that way? Right. And then yeah. you know, someone tell you a little bit about the wine making or the region or. Exactly. I mean, I've yeah. always, I mean, I, I can't go on a cruise and not eat locally for lunch or whatever. That's just, you know. Right. My, yeah. my, what I do and often what I do is, you know, go into a shop and ask the shopkeeper where to eat. So I really, um, you know, get that authentic experience. But another thing I've learned is you can look for local blogs. And even if you have to translate them, you could find some wonderful local food blogs around the world that will lead you in the right direction. That's a great tip. Well, we touched on it just a moment ago, but what about river cruises specifically? Which what um, would you recommend? Well, river cruises are the original slow travel, right? Yeah. You know, Cleopatra <laughs> on the Nile. <laughs> um, and, you know, a lot of people focus on the river cruises in Europe, which are wonderful. Um, I personally, my favorite route is from Budapest to Bucharest, oh, wow. um, where you get to see um, Serbia and Bulgaria and, it, 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 you know, and some of Croatia. And it's just yeah. a really interesting itinerary. And then, of course, you're in Romania. Um, so um, e e people tend to do the route between Germany and Budapest, but consider doing the whole Danube. Um, and the same with the Rhine. Uh, you can do pieces of it or you can do the whole thing. And, yeah. um, you know, from Amsterdam, you can, you can actually, well, there's other rivers involved too, but you can go from Amsterdam to Basel, Switzerland um, for a comprehensive experience. But there are also river cruises out elsewhere. And um, in April, some friends of mine and I, um, five couples traveling together, were on a Dahabia in, in Egypt which is, oh, you know, wow. a traditional yes. sailing boat. And it was just such a magical, casual, relaxed, wonderful experience. All our meals were out on deck mm -hmm. and it was hot, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in terms of touring the ancient sites, but, um, but just, you know, really wow. wonderful experience, a heartfelt crew dressed traditionally and, um, you know, so there are other there are experiences on the river in the Mekong um, is wonderful through Cambodia and Vietnam, yeah. um, although you have to be prepared there to hear the history and, and you're going to hear the honest yeah. history. Um, yeah. Um, and, you know, other rivers around the world. So um, you can you can also cruise in the U.S. on rivers <laughs> yeah, on the Mississippi yeah. or Colombian snake, for instance. Um so, you know, so if you like river cruising and you try it once in Europe, then also look at other places. Um, I recommend a cruise through Bordeaux, but you might not remember much of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just take lots of photos. Yeah, all those, just take photos of all those wine labels. <laughs> yes. Good tip, good tip. Um, well, what about like the really nitty gritty details, like the single supplements and the all inclusive versus not, how do you navigate that? And it just seems like that's a bit of a mystery to me. Yeah. I mean, that's a, you know, my a matter of um, personal taste, do you order the poo poo platter and get everything or do you go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> separately a la carte? Um, I, um, the all inclusives it provide sort of more of a, I don't know, no brainer experience, but you know, cause you don't have to keep worrying about what you're spending. Um, on the other hand, you are paying for the shore excursions that you'll be doing and the wine and beer you'll be drinking, you know, in the fair. Um, that said, I mean, I think for, for especially somebody that hasn't 
um, done a lot of travel. Viking does a great job with their river ships and their ocean ships in giving you um, a handheld experience with shore excursions in every port and good lecturers and you know yeah. excellent food and all that you know and a, a value added price um, that includes your tips and Wi-Fi and everything. Mm. Um, you can choose to do. Um, ships on a semi all-inclusive basis like for instance if you're a big drinker you might want to buy a drinks package so you don't have to worry about that sometimes you can get a discount if you buy several shore excursions um you know so it's really a matter of personal taste um with the yeah. single supplement a lot of cruise lines have gotten more generous with their solo pricing oh, that's good yeah. so um, if you're looking at a particular cruise line, I would first look to see if they have a posted deal on their website. If they don't, I would call their reservations and see what you can negotiate. That's sort of an un unknown little tidbit because if a cruise ship is not full and they just assume have one person in the cabin, then yeah. no one. So yeah, you yeah. may, okay. you know, it, it has traditionally been if you were a solo traveler, you may get charged both fares. They're not really... As commit, I mean, they are committed to that on, on again, sold out sailings, of course, but sure. but on, yeah. it, it's not the case on every sailing. So mm -hmm. I would always call a cruise line if I'm a solo traveler and don't see a solo deal. I would call and see what they can do for me or call a good travel agent who will yeah, know how yeah. to navigate that. I okay. mean, um, that's another thing. Cruises can be complicated. Um, you know, you'll be asked on some ships, for instance, to figure out what time you want to eat or make dining reservations. Um, or, you know, again, there's an array of shore excursions. You can pick spa treatments. Sometimes you can and should book those in advance. So uh, uh, if you could find a travel agent that really has cruise experience, I would recommend that. Okay, because they can help basically kind of filter what you want and need and then take care of booking and reserving everything. Yeah, they can be your navigator. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, the, the cruise puns are endless in your world it's really you really have to like rein yourself in i do <laughs> oh that's great okay cool is there such a thing as a like an off season or a shoulder season for cruising absolutely um and the best time to go is right before you know beginning of december right before the holidays because everybody's busy sending out uh, okay. cards and packing and not yeah. necessarily cruising and right before Thanksgiving, not not during Thanksgiving and Christmas and, and Hanukkah yeah. and New Year's, yeah. but right before any major yeah. holiday. Um, the other times um, it, it, when the kids go back to school in the summer, so yeah. by um, mid-September anyway, you're going to see some really good deals then as well. Okay. And so that could be a good time like as a solo traveler too, to consider booking some of these. Yeah, but I would always, again, you know, you, here's how you can tell. You go to a cruise website, um, such as iCruise.com, or there's many others, you know, a cruise seller, and you put in the ship and the destination that you want to go to, or maybe you don't even put the ship, just put the destination and see what deals they have, because... Okay. You'll, you'll see a wide array, you know, a, a ship that maybe is trying to sell for $7,000 may suddenly be 2500 if they're not full, right? Wow. So, wow. so wow. I mean, there's that kind of range. So, again, working with an agent, they can help you navigate that again as well. But mm -hmm. you can also just just look online um, and, and compare, and it's pretty easy to figure out what cruises are not full. Got it. Okay, great. Well, we talked about this at the very beginning. I would love your tips on navigating seasickness. What do you bring? <laughs> What's in your kit? I bring. I literally bring everything I can think of. Um, I, you know, and it's funny because a friend of mine just talk, told me that that a Dramamine, I believe, is making something with ginger now. Ginger has never been the be all end all, but one thing I do do on board is is you know just because it's supposed to be the homeopathic remedy i will seek out pickled ginger or candy ginger or ginger ale on okay. board and i think yeah. in mild cases that may help i've okay. had some success with wristbands um the the harder plastic ones seem to work better for me than the ones with a stretchy band mm -hmm. um for whatever reason um and you know, with with the medications, I think it's important to test a few different ones 
for yourself to see um, your tolerance in terms of getting sleepy. Yeah. And yeah. and um, you know, for me, what I do is I put myself on a maintenance dose of like a half tablet of Dramamine, you know, just to see, you know, what the water is going to be like. And if, you know, once I get yeah. my sea legs, I might drop it or I might up it. Um, yeah, I can't yeah. do two tabs of Dramamine. I will be in bed. And <laughs> and you also, by the way, if you're doing any medication, have to be concerned about drinking too much. So you might want to uh, have that yes. one glass of wine, but no more. <laughs> So maybe um, don't buy the drinks package. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the tra the transderm patch, um, I've had some luck with. It makes me very, very thirsty, so I have to drink lots of water on it. Yeah. Um, but, yes. uh, you know, I, I, I bring a combination. Great. Yes. Yeah. We use the patches on the, our Antarctic journey, and that helped. I had I put it on, like, maybe a day in because all of a sudden it just hit me out of nowhere and we have the drake lake as well but and that seemed to help but we did have the dry mouth right and the other thing that you can do obviously if you're really feeling ill or you're not prepared is go to the ship's doctor and they will have an injection they can give you okay um and and by the way also they will have a stock of tablets I mean, I've been on some ships. A bad sign when you're on a ship is when they put out a bowl of, of seasickness tablets. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, it's not, things aren't looking good. <laughs> but the captain, so one thing is to, um, and you can, you can somewhat predict because the captain will come on bo online um, on the speaker system, um, usually at noon every day. And, and often they will tell you what the prediction for waves is coming up. I mean, yeah. I personally have a to tolerance for five to seven foot. Once it goes above eight or nine, I start really feeling it. So mm -hmm. um, you can get some hints from what the captain is saying. Okay. Listen to the captain. <laughs> Listen have to you the captain. Well, <laughs> always anyway, but yeah. <laughs> have you, um, well, I, I shouldn't bring up Triangle of Sadness. Did you ever watch that, that movie? I did. I actually thought it was hysterical, but, you know, I mean, what can I say? <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. I, well, it's funny because, yes, I, I watched it recently and my sister was about to get on a ship and I was like, you're crazy to watch this right before you go. But that was that's an epic one. Do you think Green Apple works? Have you had any success? Um, no, with but it, uh, not particularly. That and that was what you know. My my great aunts used to give me hard uh, sour candies, you know, yeah. in the back of the car. Um, but what really helps, and I'm, I'm glad you asked that, is having a full stomach. And it's totally counterintuitive. Yeah. But if you're not feeling well, eat. Oh, interesting. <laughs> you that know, bread, shocking. crackers, something like that. Having a full stomach um, does help with the equilibrium. At least in my case. You know, okay. I'm not a doctor. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, exactly. Uh, but, you know, it's, you know, so I will reach for that green apple um, if I'm hungry, you know, mm -hmm. just to have something in my stomach. And I have okay. to admit, too, of all my years traveling, you know, and with the medications, I've very rarely actually been sick, you know, only yeah, on yeah. one or two cruises. I remember yeah. a particular one off the coast of Corsica. So I have to, <laughs> I have to think that... Um, that and, and one in Baja, you know, Mexico, off Baja, Mexico. But I have to think that, um, you know, being being cautious with the full stomach might have something to do with that. So yeah, yeah. And you you come prepared. So that's smart. Well, just looking ahead, I know you don't have a crystal ball. But what do you what do you think the future of cruising looks like? Um, I think that there's there's some prototypes out for, for ships. You know, they are building, ships last about 30 years. So the ships that they're building now, you know, will still be around by 2050. But I think, you know, cruise lines, again, in terms of propulsion, will look at everything. Like you may even see Carnival cruise ships with wind um, turbines on top. Um, yeah. there's, there, there There is a new collapsible um, wind turbine. So, you know, that... So you can go under bridges, which would have been a factor, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. but, but I think you may see that. You may see um, solar panels on top. You may see in the future less deck space because of the wind turbines and solar sure, panels. Sure. Yeah. Um, but you, you, I, I'm pretty sure you'll see electricity in there somehow. Um, some of the ideas that I've heard, such as nuclear cruise ships, I don't think I really buy. I, nobody's announced that yet. Yeah. But, but you will see as, as they develop, again, green methanol, green LNG, synthetic LNG, you'll definitely see a push 
to those because cruise lines look they know their bread and butter is the ocean yeah, <laughs> and yeah. and they want to do the right thing so yeah. so um you know when you when you're talking about an industry that's focused outdoors to a certain extent um there you're going to see changes um, i definitely think you'll see more sustainable f- food on board. I think you're also going to see, and it's happened already, a real focus on cultural and nature excursions and ports of call that are also sustainable Mm -hmm. and, you know, really focus deeply, um, not just on history, which has been sort of a thing for a long time, but on learning about the people and the places you're visiting. Love it. We'll see you out there on the high seas. (laughs) For sure. Let's do it. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for your time, Fran. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, that was our show. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe on your way out. And I'll include a link to the podcast below.